What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here checking in once again on the Sunday, January 17th, 2021, straight up 8 p.m. West Coast time here. And I'm gonna do an update video here, cover a little bit of activity still happening around Mount Hood. Although activity has died down a little bit, we're topping out at about 61 earthquakes in the Mount Hood area. I've been having a little swarm since uh, earlier this afternoon. And uh, like I said, we're topping out at about 61 so far. No new earthquakes within the last hour. Otherwise, those would be in the red circles. And all of these are continuously, or, or at least right now, in the orange area. Right at the base of Mount Hood. Um, so far, the biggest one is looking at a t about a 2.9 from earlier. Now, the USGS believes these are just purely tectonic earthquakes that are happening here of course they've had some earthquakes in the past uh, earthquake swarms you can see them there on the map and uh, you know that's typical right you see earthquake activity around a uh, volcano and uh, according to these folks here a tectonic earthquake swarm is ongoing at Mount Hood no sign of changes in volcanic activity uh, less than 100 earthquakes south of the summit in a location where swarms commonly occur Maximum magnitude so far is an M2.7 with a depth of 5 kilometers, but according to a lot of the uh, um, measurements here, we're looking at about 6, kilometer, six kilometers, 5 kilometers, uh, some going up into the mid-6 range, or down to the 6 range, I should say. See that? M, or 6.6 .6 kilometers down. 6.9, we're getting way down there, right? Well, I started to look at some uh, various volcanoes around the country and around the world and most of the magma chambers and whatnot do sit at, at about uh, between six and I believe it's 10 kilometers or so down I did just a typical magma chamber depth here into the uh, Google search um, looks like uh, the depth of the magma chambers on just any various volcanoes which are generally generally found between six and 10 kilometers deep so <clears throat> this guy's talking about a uh, just just plate tectonics here creating this activity at the base of a volcano um, at six to seven kilometers down okay did a little bit of research also specifically on Mount Hood right this article well was released uh, back in 2014 I believe um, researchers right those professional people with a paper on their wall have discovered that volcanoes can go from dormant to active very quickly okay now we've had swarms in the past right obviously um, and could this one be different it's possible could this be the one that may be uh, triggering some volcanic activity very possible uh, new research results suggest that magma sitting four to five kilometers beneath the surface of Oregon's Mount Hood has been stored in near solid conditions for thousands of years uh, the time it takes to liquefy and potentially erupt, however, is surprisingly short, perhaps as little as a couple of months. Uh, the key to an eruption, geoscientists say, is to elevate the temperature of the rock to more than 750 degrees Celsius, which can happen when hot magma from deep within the Earth's crust rises to the surface. So it can happen rather quickly. Uh, it was a mixing of hot liquid lava with cooler solid magma that triggered Mount Hood's last two eruptions about 220 and 1500 years ago. Um, yeah, so there's a little little article here. Um, you can find actually all sorts of uh, articles regarding Mount Hood. <clears throat> the hotter magma from deep down warms the cooler magma stored at 4 to 5 kilometers deep. right? And this activity is roughly between seven and we're seeing some fours right four to five and lots of fours so we're within that area right at the right at the base of that uh, volcano right there folks uh making it possible for both mag both magmas to mix and be transported to the surface to produce an eruption um oh the good news is that Mount Hood's eruptions are not particularly violent. Instead of exploding, the magma tends to ooze out of the top of the peak. How cool would that be, right? Uh, let's see here. So yeah, they're watching it, right? PNSN, USGS Volcanoes, monitoring closely, okay? So 
you know, I who's to say if this is over? You know, 61 earthquakes within about an hour and a half of each other, two hours total time, I should say. It's a lot of movement there and uh, a lot of activity to just write this out, write this off as uh, plate tectonics are at work. But that's according to the professionals, folks. I wouldn't, you know, I, you just can't be certain. You really can't. Um, is this swarm specifically the same as the last swarms that took place? Who's to say? Here is the uh, previous, see if you guys can see that, make sure that you guys can see it. Yes, you can. Okay. Here's the current swarm. <clears throat> and that uh, looks like that 2.9 uh, there is this one. Somewhere in the mix. There's 2.7 and 2.9. Anyway, there's all these other gray circles, darker gray circles, are previous swarms in the past. So it's definitely been active um, in, in, its, in its past. As you can see that on that map, the depth right here, this is the volcano peak. You can kind of see how far this is uh, in relation to past swarms, how far down, excuse me. So we're looking at about just below that five kilometer threshold there down to about seven or so, like I mentioned in between that little area, the previous swarms, as far as I can tell, was above that five, meaning, um, you know, about, looks like about four kilometers or so. So you know that solid layer kind of like that solid layer that they're talking about here where you need that hot magma to come up to mix and then to produce an eruption uh, it's uh you know is that what we're seeing this deeper movement finally making its way up here towards the uh, uh towards this area of, of uh, solid magma so they say it's something to watch folks very closely um it's looking very uh exciting i guess is the word it's kind of really exciting i said earlier i would drive up there and and definitely uh live stream from that region uh if this thing does take off anymore let's go ahead and check out the uh, uh let's see let's go back over here to the trimmer map real quick there hasn't been a whole lot of movement right but you got to think about this here <clears throat> what feeds these volcanoes right the subduction of that Juan de Fuca plate down there where it's in the slippage area the the trimmer zone where we start getting that slip and then it and then it melts and then all that stuff rises to the surface to, to the volcanoes right there hasn't been a lot not today only six and that's way up there uh just east of olympia washington region but we've seen some major check out okay going years past right here folks you see all this area up here on this screen these are the counts the total number of uh trimmers in any given well it looks like just total counts in general okay you can see that there on the uh on the uh when i hit it right it shows about 600 and something uh, uh trimmers okay going back to 2010 of course you get these little trends and it seems to happen every couple months or so just like clockwork and they go up and down up and down up and down and then towards the end of 2000 we had a massive amount of trimmer like i've never seen before I mean, and looking back over the past 10 years, nothing really can compare to it. Uh, you can see these couple of large spikes um, raise above the ones that we've seen in the past. And you, you got to think about all that, uh, that subducting, all that land, all that ground, ground, it's plate, right? The Juan de Fuca plate subducting underneath here, kind of going into that melted zone. Let me see if I can... Uh, let's see here. Jeez, man, I'm typing with one hand. There we go. Let me show you guys real quick here. Kind of what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. Here's a... Ah, shoot, hold on. Will this work? Yes, this will work. Okay. From Live Science. Pending, these guys aren't throwing a whole bunch of audible ads out all over the place. Okay, so here's a little map. You got Seattle, Washington, uh... Um, and of course, it's a slice of the earth right there. So you get the picture as we're kind of looking at Oregon. You got the Juan de Fuca plate being subducted down here, right? Underneath this North American plate. And the slippage area, the slow slip trimmer and whatnot, is roughly down here in this in this region right here. Kind of an area where it just uh, slowly slips down. And then it gets into that hot, deep, 
high temperature area down here and that's what creates the rise of magma up here to these volcanoes you can see that there specifically on that on that map so we've had a tremendous amount of tremor potentially contributing to um, a higher possibility of some volcanoes along the uh, Cascadia or along the Cascades in the Sierra Nevada potentially of, of seeing volcanic activity see these guys are just loaded with ads um, Let's see your old ones again. So if you get what I mean here, with a high amount of trimmer, it's no surprise that we are, we're kind of seeing a little bit of activity around the volcanoes there into uh, into parts of uh, Oregon. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some further activity um, at the other volcanoes as well. But uh, to say it's strictly plate tectonics, you know, that, that if that's what they want to throw out there right now, then that's I guess that's what we have to accept. But you know, be prepared nonetheless uh, for potentially more action there at Mount Hood. Kind of given just a little, just a little brief explanation of how that works. You know, most people do understand how that, uh, you know, how these volcanoes are formed along the Cascades all throughout the Washington, Oregon, and Sierra Nevada and Northern California. So, uh, due to the, uh, you know, this the subducting plate there and the the melting zone down here that rises to the surface. But for now, 61 earthquakes, in the, or 62, well, yeah, 62. Just got hiccups all of a sudden, man. I hate that. Every single time. Mount Rainier, pretty quiet. Other events up here, or volcanoes in the north, pretty quiet as well. There has been a couple smaller earthquakes, <clears throat> earthquakes there. Um, following this activity there near Mount Hood, up around the Seattle area, being the last earthquake there. Pretty shallow earthquake. At about 1.2 kilometers, 2.2 near uh, Duval, Washington. But for now, activity has calmed down within the last hour at Mount Hood. And for the most part, along the west coast, activity has calmed down as well. You don't see any red circles out here anywhere, do you? That would mean earthquake activity within the last hour. So right now, all is at a standstill. One over here in Oklahoma, um, near... Uh, what is that? Winoka, Oklahoma, 1.9 kilometers. So yeah, kind of a, a wait and see type of scenario right now. Some activity off the coast of Russia up here, 5.4, but no major earthquakes out here to report so far today. Puerto Rico still seeing some uh, movement. As far as the activity in Hawaii goes, no large scale uptick in activity or volcanic um, uptick. Just your typical what you know what's been going on at Kilauea. Uh, we are having high winds here tonight, folks. Uh, we're underneath the high wind uh, watch or warning. One of the two for 55 mile per hour possible winds tonight and tomorrow and Tuesday. Uh, with that being said, it's very possible that the uh, power may go out here in my region, which would bring the stream down. So if it does, I will probably wait uh, till the wind dies down a little bit and, uh, and then fire up the stream. Because last time we had... A massive amount of wind power kept going off every five minutes so I would start up the stream stream would go down in five minutes and then have to start it back up and then it's just it's just a little annoying you know to uh, uh, have to do that every five minutes and then YouTube only sends out um, notifications on the channel when I go live or upload a video three times in a 24-hour period so that uh, it wouldn't help just to keep restarting and going live for you folks out there so if it does if it does go down which it probably will um i will fire it back up asap soon as i potentially can yeah it's supposed to be super super windy so ah oh, fun fun anyway all right folks so yellowstone national park let's check this out real quick no swarming to report in there a couple small microquakes there in uh, around the uh, lake yellowstone area but really no swarming to report there. I wanted to go back here on the trimmer map and check the uh, seismograph stations there at Mount Hood once again. There's that swarm taking place there right at the base of the uh, volcano right there. Let's see if this seismograph station is going to uh, let me view it. It did, I'll be darned. 
So there's that 2.6, 2.8 near the Duval. That was that one way up north. Okay. Um, let's go back here to the previous. A couple more earthquakes, 2.5. So some of the microquakes are definitely not uh, showing up as strongly on this specific seismograph uh, station here. Let's see if this one is going to pick it up a little bit better. Depending on the sensitivity of the equipment, it's possible it may not uh, pick it up as much. This one here is still kind of showing it. Every one of those little spikes are showing a uh, specific microquake. The bigger ones, of course, are more dominant and more viewable on the seismograph. Uh, no signs of harmonic tremor or any type of magma movement that I can tell. But like I say, six to seven kilometers down there, this, this, uh, this swarm is a little bit different from the ones, you know, that were on that uh, map there from the uh, uh, the PNSN USGS Volcanoes tweet there on Twitter. These are the swarms a little bit deeper. The other ones are about four to five kilometers. These are about uh, anywhere from four down to seven kilometers deep. So um, just be on guard. You know, things can change in a heartbeat. Especially for the folks up there in Oregon. You know, the good thing, I guess, according to these professionals, it's not going to be explosive event, you know. It's more of a ooze type of event, you know, where you can get some pretty awesome pictures. And at nighttime, that would be pretty awesome to witness up here. Uh, a couple very close roads, highway networks up there. That would be very easy access. Of course, Mount Hood, very visible, prominent uh, feature on the landscape and on the horizon out there to many folks that live in, uh, in Oregon and Washington. So, all right, folks, I'm going to jump off here for right now. I will uh, keep an eye on things. If anything changes, the seismograph station in question for Mountain Hood is this one. Over on the left side screen, Barrett Spur. Okay, people are probably wondering, where the heck is Barrett Spur? You know, no clue. Okay, but that's the name of the station. I can't change it. Uh, it's at the base of Mount Hood. So any and all microquake activity is going to show up on that specific station called Barrett Spur. And of course, other seismograph stations around the globe uh, with their names uh, written by it. But for some reason, <laughs> the Mount Hood, Barrett Spur. Anyway, have a good day, folks. Good night, good evening. We'll chat you guys tomorrow sometime. Stay safe out there. Peace out.